let's move into the breakout players for 2024. So what we've came up with here um, are the breakout players that we believe are going to be like absolute standouts this year, who are going to like really elevate their game. From, yeah. Like you know, going to be some of the better players in the AFL for each club. Mm. So I'm going to list some through, and um, maybe if you want to want me to explain a couple, maybe I will. Yeah. Um, so I've gone with the Crows. I've gone Jake Saligo. Uh, Brisbane. I've gone uh, Kitty Coleman. For Carlton, I've gone Jesse Motlop. For Collingwood, I've gone McRae. That's the brother of Jackson McRae, yeah. Finlay McRae. Yeah. Um, for Essendon, I've gone Sam Durham. For Fremantle, uh, Frederick. For Geelong, Tanner Bruin. For the Gold Coast Suns, uh, Ben Ainsworth. For the GWS Giants, uh, Finn Callahan. For Hawthorne, I've gone Mabby Chole. For Melbourne, I've gone Harrison Petty. Uh, for North Melbourne, I've gone George Wardlaw. For Port Adelaide, I've gone Josh Sin. For Richmond, I've gone Jack Graham. Uh, for St Kilda, I've gone Marcus Winhager. For the Swans, I've gone new recruit James Jordan. For West Coast, I've gone uh, Ruben Jimby. And for the West, uh, for the Western Bulldogs, sorry, I've gone Darcy. So yeah. I, I do want to explain James Jordan first because that could be a bit surprising for some of you who haven't really been watching the Swans. I have been a little bit more, obviously. Um, I think this guy is. A really underrated talent from the Melbourne Demons. Obviously, we picked him up in the trade period. I don't think... Oh, sorry. Free agency. I don't think that he's um, was used at his full potential at the Demons. I think that's pretty safe to say. Yeah, he was. Um, yeah. He was always used as a sub. People are saying that he's going to join the Swans this year and he's going to be their sub. I don't think that's the case. I think he's a real integral part of this um, you know, build this year. Mm. So I think he's going to be playing off that wing role. Sydney don't really have the wingman that, you know... Some of the top clubs do have, like Collingwood last year obviously had Dacos, um, Josh Dacos, one of the best wingmen in the comp, and mm. obviously was all Australian for it. We saw in the grand final, Oleg Markov had a really good game. Yeah. So, you know, wingmen are very important. Looking at Melbourne as well, you've got Lockie Hunter and um, uh, Ed, Ed Langdon. Langdon. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, they're really integral to them. You've got Hugh McCluggage um, for the Brisbane Lions, who's like a really good yeah. wingman for them. You know, you think of the top clubs, you think of the really good wingmen there. And Sydney don't really have that. They have yeah. Justin McInerney, but even he was in and out of the team last year. We had Dylan Stevens, who obviously got traded to um, North Melbourne. I think that James Jordan's going to have a massive year for the Swans. I think that Sydney kind of, they lack that midfield depth, which I think he can go through there, but also he's a really good runner. Yeah. And Sydney can use that through the wing. Mm. Um, so that's really the main the main reason why I think he's going to have a massive year. Is there anyone else who you want me to explain? But guys, before we dive deep into this video, as we announced on the podcast this week, we have started a brand new company called BR Designs, where you guys can pick up some new and unique AFL prints and designs for all 18 teams. And make sure to use our unique features with our design of scanning your QR code will actually bring up on your phone the highlight that you have the design for. So make sure to head down to the description below and head to BR Designs. And guys, for the next few days, make sure to use the code FOUNDER at checkout to get 15% off your purchase. But let's get back into the video. Uh, Josh, Josh Sin for Port Adelaide. I just, he just could never get into the team. He's Well, there's been a lot of talk about him playing at halfback this year. There's been a lot of talk mm. that he's definitely elevated his game in the preseason. Uh, he was a very high draftee when yeah, he got first yeah. picked up. Um, so I think that Port Adelaide, with the introduction of like... Um, Radicalia, Zerk Thatcher, you know, Mackenzie's obviously going to be back there with Alir Alir. I think they're going to have to improve a little bit on their field kicking with their path backs. Yeah, they And yeah. Xavier Dersma going out of the team now kind of moves Bergman up to the yeah. wing. So I think that Sin will probably get a, get a go. Mm. And I think the Port Adelaide, I think he's definitely going to have a good year for it. That's mm. kind of the reasoning behind it. Obviously, yeah. this could definitely be wrong looking into the, next, in the end of the year. Really if he doesn't get a game, he gets delisted and then yeah. we're all over. Yeah. But anyway... Um, Anyone else you want to take take a talk about? Uh, not really. Um, um, like we've got most. Like I think I've got the same for West Coast in Ruben Jimby. I think it's a big season for him. For him. If he didn't get injured yeah. late in the year, he would have. He was up there with um, one of the breakout stars of last season. Um, and he would have. He could have been he talking about for a potential rising. He could have. He could have won it. I mean. Yeah. Closely, Jesus was Jesus was, was always going to get. He would have got the silver medal. He would he would have been close. He yeah. would have been close, and he would he was in the discussion for most of the season. That in the top three, most of the season. Who Jimby? Yeah, well, top five. Sorry, top yeah, five. Right, yeah. Maybe top yeah. five. Yeah. Um, actually, one more. I will talk. Uh, 
Yeah. One more I will talk about maybe is um, Harrison Petty, because that may sound a bit weird because he's been there for quite a while. I'm going to say this because I think that he's going to have a massive year up forward. Well, he's going to have to. When well, he's going to have to. Forward, <laughs> I agree with that. But we saw towards the end of the year before he got injured that um, he was really, he was being the difference for Melbourne up forward. I think he could have a 50-goal year. I know that may seem a bit big mm. for a guy, but I think the fact that Bailey Fritch has had you know a 50-goal year in the past. And no that, support around him. And no support around him, exactly. I think he could have a 50-goal year. Mm. So as long as he stays fit, I think he's a real chance. Yeah. Um, also, I said Mabby or Chol. I think he, if he has a good run at it, if we saw it at the Gold Coast a couple of years ago, he could have a good run at it. Well, I said he's... Like I think he could be recruited the season yeah. at the end of the year. So he, he, yeah, he could be if he gets up to his potential. He could have a breakout year, fifty goal plus, and he could be that sort of player. Yeah, I mean, I'm giving it to you. If yeah, you... well, I said, it, <laughs> I, I said it here first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm sorry. Anyway, all right, let's get into your breakout players. Ah, uh, yeah. So we've got we'll go like yeah. All right. So with the Crows, I've went Riley Philthorpe. Uh, Brisbane, I've went Jasper Fletcher. Collingwood, Finlay McRae. Um, Carl- Carlton uh, Matt Owies Essendon uh, Nick Cox Fremantle Jeremy Sharp Gold Coast Mac Andrew uh, GWS Aaron Cadman Geelong um, Brendan Parfit uh, Hawthorne Josh Ward uh, North Melbourne uh, Will Phillips Melbourne Tom Sparrow uh, Richmond I've went with um, Jack Ross Port Adelaide, I've went with uh, Kane Farrell. Um, St Kilda, Ryan Burns. Sydney, um, Angus Sh- uh, Sheldrick. Uh, West Coast, uh, Ruben Jimby. And Western Bulldogs, Sam Darcy. Okay. Uh, that's. I think a lot of them are pretty good. Um, what was the one... I think it was Geelong. Was it Geelong? Um, Parfit. Yeah. That was that one. That one's the one that shook me. Okay, so give me the reason why. Parfit. I think Parfit. I think looking at that midfield, that they don't have a lot of youth going through there at the moment. Patrick Dangerfield did come out sometime during the pre- uh, last couple of weeks and said that he's he's, he's going to have a breakout year for Geelong, and I think he will because he needs to show up. He's never he's not he's not really locked in that position ever at Geelong. It's his perfect time to do it with the um, aging list that they have. I think it's perfect for him, and I think he can have that breakout year. Okay. Yeah, no, that's all right. I just... Yeah, Brandon Parfit would be like a bit of a weird one. Mm. But no, I, I can kind of see that. And I think that they, he does give them something a little bit different. Mm. To be honest, I didn't see him much last year, though. So no. we'll have to see how he goes. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Um, the one I want to talk about is Tom uh, is uh, Sparrow for Melbourne. I think he... I think... Yeah, I think he's definitely up I there. think with... The, the fact that the James Harms did go to the Bulldogs, um, James Jordan went to Sydney, there's a spot there for him in the midfield. And the fact is, with Oliver and the, and all those problems at the moment with him, and um, by the way, they did say today that Oliver did return to his first training session of the year. But oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did say well, that still with all the, that scrutiny and all that sort of stuff, with those two departures that I just mentioned, um, there's a spot there for him. And Tom Sparrow has been around it the last couple of seasons, and I think it's his time that he can shine. Yeah, for for the um, for him, and they got to stop relying on the the, the midfield of. And uh, Max Gorn. Yeah. They've got to find other avenues because if they all, if one of them goes down, yeah. they don't really have the depth, in my opinion. No. But they have the experience as well to, to help them out. Yeah. With the fact, yeah. So I think they've done very similar to what, um, sort of how Richmond kind of did when they were getting to the end of their tenure of like top team when they kind of lost all their like depth players. Yeah. Especially towards 2019, 2020. You know, that was kind of the end. Like they were losing a lot of like their depth players who were going to different clubs like Brendan Ellis and that. Mm. So Melbourne have kind of lost a lot of their depth players like Jordan and Harms and that sort of stuff. Mm. So Melbourne, you know, they've got to kind of prove this year. We kind of saw when we talked about our ladder predictions, you kind of predicted them to drop quite considerably. Yeah. So <laughs> did you see a couple of comments talking about you picking Carlton for 21 and 2 yeah <laughs> they were very impressed hey which I thought was very funny I think a lot of people thought that may have just been my predictions because we look very similar mm. <laughs> so that was very interesting but I don't mind the prediction of Tom Sparrow I think that you, I agree with you but I think he's definitely up there for a potential you know uh, you know a rocket year a breakout year for him yeah because yeah I think also another thing as well is Petrarca proved last year when he played forward that they kind of needed that forward option yeah and I still think he's better of a midfielder. I think they need him in the midfield. I think if they're going to, you know, rise to the top and potentially, you know, they're still in the premiership window, mm. even though maybe some people would say no. But yeah. I think he needs to be in the midfield. But if he can pinch him forward, yeah, in, yeah I think that's definitely a, 
you know, I think that's definitely something they can look at. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Exactly. The one last one I want to do talk about is um, Mac Andrew for Gold Coast. I think that he did get it, he did slot himself in the, into that team um, for last season. But I think another preseason to him at the Gold Coast under Damien Harwick's new um, game role, plan, or game plan, yeah. whatever you want to call it. I think he can shine, and I think he can play as that intercept role that Aaliyah does play for Port Adelaide. That yeah. he will go back to Aaliyah. But yeah, so Mac Andrew, we've seen him do some things, but I think he could have a breakout year for the Gold Coast. Yeah, I think we've seen the potential of Mac Andrew. Um, um, a lot of you guys may not know a lot about Mac Andrew because a lot of people probably don't watch a lot of Gold Coast games. Yeah. Unless you know by the, the design of it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys know about that. That was a uh, that was, that that was bad. That was bad. Um, but yeah, Mac Andrew, I think that a lot of he did have a lot of off-field issues earlier on in his mm, career, but he definitely yeah. came to the fore uh, throughout the middle of the to end last year. Mm. Um, very good field kick yeah. as well, which is always very good. And has that sort of like, I don't know, He's obviously a very um, lanky guy, mm. but he ha- if he can build another year a year into his body, just mm. grow a little bit more strength in there. Yeah, you know, he can still have that lengthiness of him. You know that um, that sort of a Lear role where he just glides across. Mm. But if he has, if he builds an extra bit of strength to hold himself against, um, against the bigger opponents, I think yeah, yeah. he can have a really big breakout year for the Gold Coast. And you know, I think there's a couple, and I think it just gives the license for Collins and um, Ballard, and uh, I think Powell probably be back by then. Yeah. I think it just gives them the extra license to, you know, oh, we don't have to play that uh, intercept as well as on our opponents mm. if um, Mac Andrew can develop. Yeah. They've also got a couple of players building down there, like Joel Jeffrey played a little bit in the back half towards the end of the year and he played pretty decently. Mm. So that could be another option. I can't believe they signed him for four years. <laughs> <laughs> Still can't. Yeah, I don't know about that. But anyway, mm. um, yeah, I think that's definitely another option as well. Um, you got anything else that you want to add? No, not really. No, not really. All right. So, if you guys have any other ideas, other players that you believe will be having a breakout year, or you think that maybe we're wrong about a couple, a lot lot of people love to tell us that. Yeah. Um, I don't mind that. If other people have differing opinions, that's totally fine. Um, But if you do have a different opinion, let us know down in the comment section below um, who you think should have a breakout year for your club. (laughs)